Hey everybody. Today we're using Git to deal with a common programming dilemma. You've got a project that you're really happy with and you want to go back and potentially tinker with it, maybe make some changes that could make it a lot better or could break it. And you've probably had the experience of copying your folder, uh, making some changes to one of your files, maybe breaking things, maybe not, and then later on just trying to reconcile everything manually. Well, today I want to show you a better workflow that I absolutely love using Git. Before you can do any of this, you're going to have to have Git installed and set up. If you don't already have that done, um, I have a whole video about that. I'll throw a link to that up top. So um, I already have a project folder here, and um, it's called Branches, appropriately enough. And within this folder, I've got a couple of files called Pivot Longer and Pivot Wider. And these are two files that I generated in a recent class that I was teaching where I was teaching, well, Pivot Longer and Pivot Wider. And um, let's see here. So the Pivot Longer um, output, basically, is um, from the billboard data set, I did a pivot on it and then did some other operations and ended up with this plot here where we see four of the most popular songs from the year 2000 and their places on the billboard charts over time. Maybe I'll even zoom in on this to get a better look at it. And at the end of the lesson, I kind of left the plot like this with a comment that ideally we'd like to flip this around vertically because lower numbers on a billboard chart are actually better and are actually higher rankings. And so right now it doesn't make sense to have, for instance, the number one jam at the very bottom of the plot. So hypothetically, we're going to put ourselves in a situation or in an imagined situation where we don't know how to do that. We want to go in, experiment, try things out, but potentially maybe foul things up along the way. All right, so I have already initiated a Git repository. You can either do that when you start your new project, or if you have an existing project, you can go to Tools, Project Options, Git SVN, and change the drop-down menu from None to Git. And that'll ask you to restart R, no big deal. Okay, so um, I already did that right before I started shooting. Let's go ahead and uh, start by putting the files that we have into that Git repository. Basically, this is just taking a snapshot. They're already saved. I think of this as just putting down like a mile marker on the side of the road saying uh, this is a place I might want to come back to later. Click on the check mark box to take me to the staging area and then I can make a commit message. In this case, how about initial commit? There we go. Hey, by the way, when you do that, um, our studio is pulling up a console basically and so you can see the code that's actually being used to do this. So git commit and then a bunch of, uh, of optional arguments that our studio is using by default. Okay, great. So I want to have a situation here where I am making divergent paths. I want to both keep what I have now and potentially make additional changes in other files, but also have sort of a sandbox branch where I can do some uh, more experimental stuff and worry less about breaking things. And so I want to make a new branch and I can do that in our studio from this sort of, uh, well, branchy looking thing in the Git pane. And when I do that, it will ask for the name of the new branch. So how about, I don't know, I don't need to be too descriptive right now. How about sandbox? Again, we see the code. It's creating a new branch and then checking it out. So that means switching to it. And um, you can see now we've got a little drop down menu here where we can just quickly switch and back, switch back and forth between the branch we made and the original one that's called main by default. By the way, the main branch used to be called the master branch. Um, same thing. All right, great. So uh, let's make a change. Let's go ahead and within pivot longer in this final GG plot, let's do um, ylim and then the boundary limits that I want. So I want my boundaries to go from 85 at the bottom to zero at the top. By the way, there's many different ways that you can flip your, uh, your axes in ggplot. And therefore we got the thing that we wanted. And now you can see that uh, the rank of zero is right near the top. The rank of one is right at the top. So let's save that. And um, let's commit it to the sandbox branch. So I'm gonna go over to the Git tab click on the file that I want to stage it, go to the staging area and put in a descriptive commit message. So how about a uh, flip axes? I'm in the habit of using present tense for my commit message. Um, that is 
sort of, I think, the, the norm, but the most important thing there is just to be consistent with yourself over time, as well as the people that you're working with. By the way, we do have a little drop-down uh, tab right here, and so we can change branches from the staging area too, going from the sandbox branch to the main branch. We'll go ahead and check that out. And um, in particular, if we want to, we can see the commit history, both for our sandbox branch, ooh, I switched back to that somehow, as well as the main branch. Okay, so those are looking a little bit different. So uh, let's go back here now, and um, before I merge these, let's actually make some changes to this other file that I have here, Pivot Wider. So in my Pivot Wider lesson, I took the Table 2 data set. It's built in with Tidyverse. It's in a wide format. I'm sorry, it's in an uh, overly long format where the type column includes the names of two different variables. And I'm going to pivot it wider so that I have columns called Cases and Population. And this code works just fine. But uh, I want to go back and add the ID calls argument. That's um, something I'm in the habit of doing, explicitly saying what columns are identifying the observations in the data set that I'm trying to pivot. And I find that that helps to prevent errors where I, where I end up doing a pivot using uh, columns that I did not expect to be identifying observations. OK, so same output. Let's save that, and let's commit it using uh, the commit button in my git tab. So now I'm committing to the main branch. So this is going to be committed on a different branch than uh, the save that I did to pivot longer. So how about add id calls for my commit message? Great. And um, if I look at my history here, there we go. And uh, compare in the main branch where I have the initial commit followed by add ID calls. Compare that to the sandbox where I have the initial commit followed by the flipping of the axes. Now, notice those are using different files. There's no conflict between these two. So I'm going to merge these two um, branches together. It's a situation where the merge should be pretty seamless. I'm asking Git to make changes to both files um, or to its record of both files, but I don't have to choose between changes that were made to the same file. When you have a, um, a situation like that, you get a conflict when you do a merge. It's a bit more of a complicated situation. I'll deal with that in a separate video. OK, let's go back to the main branch. That's the one that I want to um, merge into. So when you're doing a merge in Git, you want to make sure that you are in the branch that you're moving into, not merging, not the one that you're merging from. OK, so um, this is something we need to do from the terminal. There we go. And um, you just can't get around that. When you're using Git, um, even if you're using R and RStudio, which does make things easier, you just sometimes need to go into the terminal to get things done, especially as you get beyond just the basic upper operations of making commits and pushing to GitHub. OK, to execute the merge from the terminal, we just need the command git merge and then the name of the branch that we want to merge in. So in this case, sandbox. Technically, that's all you need, but I'm going to go ahead and add a message right here from the terminal, dash dash message. Did I spell that right? M-E-S-S-A-G-E. -E. OK, it's just how the window is, uh, is showing. And then in quotes, how about just uh, do the merge for now? And that should do it. Now, technically, you don't have to put a message in here. But if you don't, oftentimes um, Git will prompt you to. You can do it through RStudio, which is great. That's the natural thing to do. But then you end up having to um, restart your terminal. You get some, uh, oftentimes, some unpleasant red lettering that I'm trying to avoid as I'm recording, recording for you good people. So dash dash message, and then in quotes, the message that you want. So there we go. Um, and if we look now, we can see that uh, not only is the pivot wider how we want it, with the ID calls included, but pivot longer now also has the extra line with the Y limb. Great. One thing I'll show you if I go over here back to the, uh, the history pane and refresh that, look at how the, uh, the little roadmap here on the left looks. From our initial commit, we can see the branch from the sandbox where we flipped our axis. We can see that there was a commit there. 
as well as the add ID calls in our main branch here, the green one going up and down, and we can see them coming back together with do the merge. Now we're done with our branch. We can go ahead and delete that. We do that also within the terminal. So uh, git branch dash D and then the name of it, sandbox. And now it's going to eliminate that, deleted the branch. And so if I, it's still showing up here in the RStudio pane for a minute. If I try and switch to it, it won't. And if I hit the refresh button here, now the sandbox pane is gone. The sandbox branch is gone. If I look at the, uh, the history pane over here, things look exactly the same, except for the fact that where flip axis previously said sandbox, now that's gone. So we still have an indication that there was a branch, but uh, that those changes have been merged back in. Okay, great. This should uh, really speed up your workflows and make things a lot easier and faster compared to that other workflow of like copying and pasting your directory, doing some changes and then merging them back manually. I love this. I use this technique all the time. The main caution about it is you want to be careful not to edit the same file across different branches. If you do that, you're going to get a conflict, not the end of the world, but certainly something you want to avoid. Resolving conflicts like that will be the topic for a, a vid that I'm going to be recording very, very soon.